I've just downloaded the brand new Microsoft Copilot app on my iPhone. You can also get this on your Android device. Here are the things that you can do with it. I've had a bit of a play. I'm going to take you through three things I think are awesome. A couple of things that I'm definitely going to start using straight away. And one thing that mm, I, I'm not really super impressed with. The first thing I want you to notice here, there's a little toggle switch here that says use GPT-4 for free. So first thing is you download it from your app store of choice, open it up and you've got this experience here on your mobile device. The first thing that I did with this was to work with the camera function or the image function, because this is something that I think is different from using a web browser. You're out and about and you want to find something. I took a photo of my <laughs> Lego model that I've got in the background here, and you can see that that was a live photo, and then I can ask it a question. Now, what I'm doing here is letting this one run in close to real time. It takes about 20 seconds to run, and then as we show some other examples, I'll speed that up for video editing magic a little bit here. So the first thing that is heartening here is it comes back and it's found Lego Ghostbusters Ecto-1 Australia. Good. Okay, so it's doing the right search. So the thing here is that this is Copilot that is connected to the internet. I'm using GTP4 and it's connected to Bing Search as well. So it's actually able to identify that image find it, conduct a search, give me information about it and give me some options for shopping. And these are actually all legitimate stores that I've heard of as a Lego buyer in Australia. Little button on the bottom there when you're ready to click through to start a new conversation and it sweeps it clean. Here's another example. I was lucky enough last year to go to the Met when I had a few days in New York after the PAL platform conference. And this is a painting that I quite enjoyed. Now, if you're in a gallery and and you wanted to know what this painting is and you don't have the tour guide with you, then this is something you could do. I've actually got the photo on my phone so you can upload a photo from your phone or do what I did in the last example and do that photo in real time. And it's actually telling me what this is. It's giving me information about it. You'll notice with citations here, because this is something that's very good about the fact that it's actually connected online, is it's giving you those citations and you can click through. It's giving me some other sort of replica shopping ideas here. So let's say I wanted to know more about it. Is this one of the most famous paintings? And I want to learn a little bit more about this painting. So this is something that where you can't, you know, the strength here of the generative AI is that it's more than a search engine. If I knew the name of the painting, I could just go on and use my favorite search engine of choice and search for it. But if I've got a photo of something and I don't know what it is, then this reverse image search is actually something that I think is really useful. This is definitely something that I'm going to use. I love this sort of art gallery type example, identifying objects. You could be out somewhere as a tourist and see a landmark and go, oh, what's that? And take the photo with your camera and get the answers about what's going on there. So definitely definitely rating that feature. While we're here with images, the other thing I like here is being able to do image generation. Now I'm doing everything typing on my phone here. There is a little microphone button, so it does support speech to text as well. This is something that's, you know, <laughs> a little bit of fun here. Generate an image of a Labrador retriever playing Scrabble with a teenage girl. Now the more you put into your prompt, the more accurate it's going to be. You'll see it's kind of generating the name at the top for that chat, you get this little icon here. This is actually using the DALI 3 image generation model. This is the same thing that uses that's used in Microsoft Designer if you've had a chance to play with that experience. But the thing with having it on your phone is it gives you a really easy way to be able to save that image on your phone. So I've come in here, I've clicked through on one of those. Actually, quite like that. Everyone appears to have the right number of limbs and fingers and things. It's quite cute. And so I can just press that on my iPhone. The Android experience will be whatever it is there. I don't know that one as well. Highlight that. And then I'm getting these iPhone options to just share or save to photos. So this use case of being able to generate an image and save it to the photos on my phone or send it to someone on my phone is something that I definitely think I will use. Created as a cartoon is what that's meant to be. And I've missed spelled it, you'll see there that it says, I don't understand what you mean. And so I've gone in to start saying, oh, actually, yes, that is what I mean. And I've realized it's self-corrected or I was hoping it's self-corrected and it's gone ahead and generated it anyway. So it's smart enough in context here. You can iterate in the conversation 
to say generated a different way and it knows what's going on. Again, some quite nice results with diverse looking teenage girls in here. I'm pretty happy with this as well. So we can come through, look at the quality also here with this image generation model of the letters in there. Some of the earlier ones did absolutely terrible things with words and with people. So definitely improvement here. The other part of generative AI that's really powerful as opposed to just doing search type things is this use case of being able to do creative work. So what we can see here is write me a story to go with this image and it actually can create these kinds of things on the fly. I'm this is not something, this is not the thing that I, this is in my things that I do rate. I'm still getting to the one that I don't rate. I like this creativity about it. I'm not sure what my use case would be here. While we're on this, this is your personal AI assistant. This is not necessarily your work thing, although you can use it for work examples. I'll show you one of those in a minute. It's not connected to your Microsoft 365 account or your business data. You're just signing in with your personal Microsoft account. This is branded and set up to be your personal AI assistant. You don't have to sign in, you're going to get a better experience though. If you do, you've got access to that image generation model. You do have to sign in to get access to that. Here's one that is a little bit more of a work related thing. And you'll see I'm using a common prompt here, asking the model to act as a certain type of persona to write something. So this way of generating content, I think is possibly more in my zones. I've given you one sort of very creative example here, and then something that's in a bit more of a work example. Now, there are different tones within here. I'm using GPT-4, which is the most creative tone. And you'll see it is getting quite creative with the words here. To me, this is a little bit wordy. <laughs> you can go through and refine that conversation and change it. But what I'm going to do here is start again, copy that and come in and change it to this more precise tone. So you'll see you've got these three options here, the creative, which is using GPT-4 and these other ones, which will use the GPT-3.5. Honestly, I think this one is a better result. So think about the use cases here. You don't always have to jump to GTP4 just because it's the latest and greatest one, even though it is. Some of the use cases are just as easily served by the previous model in here. Another one, let's iterate on this a little bit more, create a list of resources, help me design a training plan. So these types of tasks that generative AI is good at beyond just searching for facts, definitely a use case that I think I will be exploring a little bit more and that I would encourage you to have a look at as well. Let's have a look now at one where I am Mm, less impressed. I'm traveling to Melbourne for a conference. I actually live in Melbourne, but I've done this one so that I can fact check. Act as a local and suggest some things for me to do. Now, the upside downside here is that because it's connected to Bing Search, it's actually it's kind of behaving more like a search engine and less like a generative AI piece here. It's suggesting, even though I've asked it for things that I wouldn't commonly find, the top three would be three of the top go-to tourist attractions in Melbourne that you would find with any search. The second one's here about the saboteurs and the history of donuts tour. I didn't know. I did actually go away and find more about the donuts tour afterwards and quite happy with that. Let's compare that to what happens when we just go straight for ChatGPT. This is actually giving me things. I live here. These are off the track, genuinely, genuinely good things. This is actually a much better answer to the question. So I'm loving the ability to work with images here, to search for images, to reverse search images, to create images. I'm loving that generating content where you're asking it to do it. But this thing where you're asking it for answers to a question, it's still becoming too much of a search engine capability for my liking. I would still use a search engine for that, or I would go to ChatGPT for that kind of thing. This does actually replace the Bing Chat app. Microsoft Copilot is the renaming of Bing Chat. I'm going to delete that app from my phone. You'll see if I go in there, that actually does have the Bing search engine plus this Copilot experience, but I'm just going to go straight for the Copilot app from here. So tell me what it is you think you will use. Here are some other ideas from Microsoft. And if you'd like to go deeper into Microsoft Copilot and what that is, then check out my other video here. Thanks for watching.